Hi, I'm Thomas Ernst, and I'm going to be on the Coriolis Effect with Corey Oliver. Welcome to the Coriolis Effect with Corey Oliver. Hi guys, I'm Corey Oliver. Thanks for watching the Coriolis Effect. Please hit the subscribe button below, and we hope you like this episode. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, Corey. Could you say good morning a little less volume? Because you say good morning, it's like good morning. Good morning, Bob. Yeah, just like that. Good morning, Bob. I like it. You should do the whole show that <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. How did I know? Because you set me up. How do I know? Um, What's going on today? We have Thomas Ernst. I have the greatest stories because I met this guy at... He's an actor, right? He's an actor, but I met him at Kitson which is a big store here in LA. And this is one is it happens to be in the Palisades. And I was there with my friend and he was there and we just got to talking quickly. And he's an actor from Denmark, big and big. He's big, big here. He, like him, huh? His name's Thomas Ernst, E-R-N-S-T. He's an actor, a writer. He has a lot to share. I'm very excited to interview him. He's from Denmark. Okay. He has an accent and all. And he's for okay. our, ah, he is here. Ah. Yes. I'll right, be right there one second. We're just talking about guess, him. Yeah, he's, he's here. He's here. He's, he's here on time. time. Everybody's on time or early today. We're so, late. We're running late today. okay. Well, anyway, I'm very excited. So, we'll find out all about you later, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> You're cutting into my talk about me. All right. See you in a few minutes. This episode is sponsored by Brizo Healthy Fruit Tonic. With Manuka honey and apple cider vinegar, less than four grams of sugar, and under 35 calories per can. Each of Brizo's four flavors not only taste great, they are an excellent source of vitamin C. Brizo boosts your immune system and is great for your post-workout recovery. Brizo, available on Amazon and at Brizo.com. Yeah. That's such a great idea, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. Let's start the show. Okay. Okay. And it's going to start with that. That's such a great idea, Bob. <laughs> Nobody knows you're being sarcastic. Everybody thinks you were being honest. I know. <laughs> well, um, let's start the show. Yes. Welcome to the Coriolis Effect. I have Thomas Ernst in studio today. He actually came in studio for us. I'm so excited. I met him in the Palisades. Three weeks ago? Three weeks ago. Three it weeks must be. or a week or a month ago almost. Anyway, we started talking and I I've, obviously I, I kind of probably somewhat knew that he was an actor just because, you know, he's you have that look, that that look to be an actor. And how'd you meet? I met him at, in the Palisades at a store. How? At, at, at this store called Kitson. At the store you called Kitson. We just we were talking and I didn't do that. <laughs> I would not do that. Thomas, do you get that reference? Um, I had the feeling like, uh, first of all, thank you for having oh, me here welcome. in the studio. Yes, I mean, what an honor to be here you. with you guys. Um, I, I think what, what I felt like when we met in the store was like, I think we had this outgoing energy, something, and I'm like just a very outgoing person. Yeah. And I think maybe you thought I, I look funny or I think we just had a good conversation. Yeah, no, and you was like, good conversation. podcast, I love podcasts. And oh, you're an actor. I'm an actor too. Okay. And all of a sudden, boom, bada bing, we're here. You're here. And and that's so nice of you to drive all the way out here too. Of course, it's a beautiful day, and I'm glad to be alive and be here. Oh, yeah. Oh well, I can't wait to dive into your story because what I found interesting about you was that you are from Denmark. Correct. And you worked considerably in Denmark. Like you worked a lot in Denmark, and yeah. you can go on. You know, for those listening, you can go on the IMDb and see your your you credits. Yeah, I did actually. I know. <laughs> You can go, go on. Look up the IMDb. You can go on IMDb, on and just so you know, um, Bob does interject quite a bit, okay. and he <laughs> is is funny. And when he's not, just laugh anyway. I don't interject. I'm part of this show. You told me. You said I get to speak. <laughs> I know we joke around a lot. I, I love it, and, and some you can say whatever. Sometimes I'm still translating That's words. Okay. Corey yeah. likes to explain yeah. all my jokes because she doesn't think anybody gets them. But. <laughs> that is funny, though. You have a, a very quiet laugh, Corey. Everybody I'm doesn't. Sorry, understand but she's you really are them. funny. Um, <laughs> oh, you say it like uh, it's a surprise. <laughs> But no. you're correct. I'm all the way from. I'm born and raised in Denmark, and I mean, sometimes I say I'm from New Orleans. 
Just yeah, yeah, uh, okay, that would pass. Yeah. Yeah, and some people are like, no, you're not from except, New Orleans, and it's like you can't say New Orleans, it's New Orleans. New Orleans, no, yeah, New and so Orleans, yeah. so they can see I'm not from New Orleans, so I say I'm from South Dakota, and then they laugh again. I say, okay, <laughs> I, <laughs> you I, could pass for South Dakota. So I mean, sometimes I have good and bad days with the accent and the English, and sometimes, but uh, yeah, yeah, keep the accent. You'll work a lot more with that accent because everybody great. tries to do the accent, and some of us can't. <laughs> I can't do. I can speak. I can say a little, speak a little bit of Swedish, which is I. Oh. And you know, I, I know the importance. No, jag älskar dig så mycket. Oh, yeah, hey. that was very correct. Mean? Like that means uh, I love you very much. Oh. I can say hey, who more do? Every time I heard that. Beautiful. Hey, yeah. who more do? Is hi, how are you? Yeah, my bra tak. Wow! Hey, we get some uh, some Scandinavian <laughs> audience here. It's like, I feel like we can really. Uh, I know. I know. <laughs> How do you so, know that? Because I actually dated somebody who was from Sweden, and I tried very hard to learn the language. And I'll tell you, it was not. It's not that hard. It's a good language to learn and to pick up if you. Because a lot of the th- those similar words, like hand is hand is hand. You know, you have similar. Kinda, yeah. And I think also like the triangle up there in, in the north, like Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. Yes. People think it's kind of the same thing, but it is also. But it's like America, Canada. What is like? There's a little difference, there is, but yeah. like, not that much. Yeah. But I love the language. So I, you know, I mean, if you're gonna date someone or marry someone or be with someone who has a different language, learn it. Or at least Preaching take the, the time to try, you know? I mean, I think it's so important. So. Yeah. My wife is from Eastern Europe. Uh, she's Ukrainian. Oh, okay. The yeah. first words I learned in Russian and Ukrainian was da daragaya. <laughs> yes, dear. Yeah. <laughs> I worked on a, a, need to say. on a Ukrainian film crew once, and we're f- and there was like only people from Ukraine behind the scenes, and they all say da 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 I was like, it sounds like <laughs> machine gun. I was like, what is this? And I learned arbus. Oh, yeah? It means well, watermelon. Oh. I don't know why you wouldn't try to learn <laughs> Because like, he looks, because unlike most people, he looks good without a million lots of lights. <laughs> he does, huh? I know, he doesn't need lights like me. <laughs> <laughs> he's young. I he know, need that. he's got that great, like, Denmark skin. you got great skin. Oh, oh my I'm gosh. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> anyway, I'm very thankful to have you in the studio today, and thank you for driving all the way here. Of I course. appreciate it. Um, I definitely want to dive into your story and to everything, but we do have a word of the day that we start the show off with, and it's a fear word. It's like okay. a, fear word. It's a, a phobia, phobia word. word, which is the fear of. I'm going to say a word. It's a phobia. You have to tell me of what it is a phobia of. is Danye phobia. D-O-N-Y-A-E phobia. Danye phobia. Danye phobia? Yeah. Mm. Danya, that sounds like uh, there's like you're it's like you're afraid of gum or something. Uh, that's a good guess, though. I would it. say the fear of Denmark. Oh, <laughs> really? How did you know that? <laughs> that is. I don't know. Did you look at the paper? No, I swear, honest to the Lord, I did not. In, in Latin, Danya is Denmark. Oh, exactly. Are you serious? Yes. How did you know that? You know, you act like I'm so stupid. <laughs> I don't act like you're stupid. She never gets these right. <laughs> Actually, I think I've had about three or four of them right. And this is our 79th episode. That's true. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but anyway, you're my good luck charm today. So thank you. If you're yeah. Denmark, which I am not afraid of, by the way. Uh, but we which have Tom. Are you afraid of? I'm not afraid. I don't live in fear. The Bible says, do not be afraid 365 times, and that's once for every day. I'm going to do it again. And you know why it says it 365 times? Why? Because in the third century, Emperor Constantine took out the other 14 times and said it and said, make it 365. (laughs) Okay, okay, okay. (laughs) I don't even get that one, so don't worry. I like it. uh, (laughs) Thomas. You get that. Emperor Constantine is the one who put the Bible together. (laughs) Yes, yes, but no one's listening to you. (laughs) I'll just say, you got to learn one thing every day, and you'll be good for the rest of your life. Right. That's a great. That's it. And if you meet somebody that doesn't like it, what do you have, Danya phobia? Yeah, exactly. Go. That's so a good you'll one You'll never too. forget that word. Call them in 20 years, you'll never forget that. It's exact, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> Danya phobia. <laughs> Danya phobia. <laughs> Danya. Oh, yeah, that's good. Okay, so that's great, Bob. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> no, you interject My whenever you want to. Um, well, I'm very excited to get to know you. I, Like I said, three weeks ago, didn't know you and didn't know you existed. But here's the thing, because I've been in it for 26 years and and we've talked about this and there is definitely an energy about having, being in person for an audition and then there's Zoom. And personally for me, I was that kid in high school where I would go home, I'd study for everything, a math test, let's say, and Mm -hmm. I'd know everything. And then as soon as my teacher would say, okay, you have 30 minutes, I'd go blank. 
Mm. And so when I would go into an audition and they'd st- I, I just like blank, but on a Zoom or in a pre-taped one, yeah. I can take the best of and and it's you like have the words up on the screen beside you. Yeah. It's just a different, you know, so for some people it's easier in person as opposed to the Zoom. So you, you're saying you like the in-person better. Yeah, and, it, and it's just because I'm used to it. I yeah. started auditioning when I was like, seriously, when I was like 12, 13. So about uh, four years ago. <laughs> I know. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but I, I think it's like what, what we grew up with or we're used to. So, and I like what you said too, when you walked into an auditioning room, for us actors that like, re- like that, it's just like, yeah, you go blank. Mm-hmm. And I like that because it's now or never. Mm, and that's good. And sometimes to remember, now I say back in the days, but you could have three or four auditioning in a day where you were driving yes, around, yes. changing in your car, and you have a new coffee, and dang, 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 you're, you're going. preaching to the choir. She's done that. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to find the Thomas guy. <laughs> we didn't have ways on our phone. No. We had like a paper map. And, uh, and I just like, yeah, that was a long time ago. But, <laughs> but, um, but you get to know the streets of LA pretty pretty quick. Uh, but I see all the auditioning and casting studios, they're boarded up, they're closed now. They're so done. that's why I'm like, I, d- I don't even want to spend more time on like, like oh, I miss it. And then yeah. I hopefully it's going to go back because I can see it from everyone's standpoint. It's easier like sending and stuff tapes. And if you think about it, you know, you go through a process. You go to the first call, then you have a call back and some, then you'll go to like the directors and sometimes you go to the producers and directors and they they're actually not having to waste their time either. And everything's on a videotape anyway that they're looking at. So why wouldn't they just do Zoom or do a video? Yeah. So that's another thing too in like self tapes. It's like it's actually really hard for us actors to find a scene partner mm-hmm. that can come over to your apartment, set up the lights, and like take out time of their own personal time to right. to do a scene with you. So actually, you make an app in LA that has scene partners come over like you you know like you call up and get your hair done you have a scene partner comes over you have a bunch of actors that's a good idea yeah topic. yeah yeah man I mean I lost lost but a lot of my friends they moved back uh, to their hometowns right. because of COVID so it's like it's hard to find those scene partners and the acting studios are closed down and stuff so it's a lot of work like doing a self tape yes. nowadays because you have to upload it edit it make it look great it's not like simple on a phone anymore do you do it on a camera or your phone I have a camera. Yeah, yeah. I invested in this because I kind of like know where, where we're going. So it's just like, why not do it properly? Like, I what? love what he just said. What? I kind of know where we're going. He has a vision and he has a plan. And you've really made it happen in a big way, even in three years. I know it seems mm. like a long time, but I know people that have spent, you know, <laughs> I mean, myself, I, I spent a long time, you know, yeah. I was gonna say, if you need a scene partner, I have a really good uh, actress, a good scene partner with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and <laughs> and I mean, if yeah, again, it's like then it's the time where it's like, can you come yeah. to me and to my or whatever we we figure oh, out. You, but you have to go to yeah, <laughs> I have a few good good people out here left that like we we have a good little community yeah. where we can help each other and. Yeah, I think that is what it's about. It's a teamwork, and it's like yeah, if she's make it, that's good for me, and if I'm like just like help each other out that's as right, much yeah. as possible yeah. because you can't do this on your own. Well, that's a new business. You'd be a scene partner. That's what it's called, scene partner. I know yeah. that, are, that are, there are self-tape studios out there in LA, yeah. but I mean, unless you have a good pocket of money, it's like it's going to cost you a lot every time. And if you have three self-tapes studio. in a week, it's going to add up. Yeah, so yeah. you can do it yourself. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Anybody with a camera and iPhone can do anything in those studios. Do you know, though, okay, so you know Dustin Hoffman. Yeah. Go ahead. Do you know Dustin Hoffman? Yeah, I do. That's my, our name dropping button. Um, I do know him, and he gave me a really valuable piece of information and advice. I've met a lot of people along the way that'll tell you little bits, right? Mm-hmm. And obviously, you already know this. You're an accomplished actor. But acting is reacting. Mm-hmm. And that's really what he said. And so when you're sitting opposite a casting director or an assistant to a casting director, and they're literally going like this, and they're saying, and you're having to react to that, yeah, right. Yep. As opposed to if I was like, hey, you know what? I really, you're really making me mad. Then you would react to that. Yeah. And so, like for me, it's so much easier when you have somebody to even bounce off of that gives you something. You'll hear actors say, oftentimes, well, yeah, they gave me a lot, even when they're mm. off camera, mm. and you're doing your one take. Yeah. With your close up, and they're still in character. That's a gracious actor. I I right? agree with you so much, Corey, because it's like it's hard to find those that actually want to play with you. Yeah. And 
for me, it's like I, I can't really do a self tape with my mom or my girlfriend. Or <laughs> it's like really, I mean, worst case scenario. But I need someone that's ready to play and yeah. like. Uh, uh, it's like almost being naked in front of someone because it's like, it's not embarrassing, but I'm, you know, we are actually trying so hard here to come up with something that's authentic mm -hmm. and real and, and full of character and, and be present. And like, it's hard to, yeah, if you say you read with someone where you only can see their forehead or not their eyes right. and like, it, yeah, it is hard. So yeah. yeah. Prior to all of this, when you were in Denmark and you, when you were younger, at what age did you know you wanted to be an actor? Cause that's a pretty, bold dream. dream yeah um it for me as i remember it it came like very very early um and which i'm very very grateful for today that i think i was around like five six years old was born on the southwest side in denmark there was like really not much culture and like art and there was still, like a local little theater and i was like yeah I've, i always wanted to like entertain and be perform and so my parents they sent me down there which was great so I had this little little theater where I was playing for almost eight years so I knew from a very very young start like I, I wanted to be an actor yeah so that made the like the journey like not easy but I know which way I wanted to go because mm -hmm. there were so many of my friends that didn't know what they wanted to do with their lives so like I don't know and I'm like what I know where I'm going so Lucky for that, back in 2001, they opened up something to call the Legoland Show Academy, was like the Danish version of Mickey Mouse Club, pretty much. Ah. So I attended an open audition when I was 11 at that time, and, and was one of the youngest apprentices at, the, at that show school. And then that's where it started to be being professional, yeah. So the Mickey Mouse Club, though, those kids had to sing, dance, act. It was yeah. a triple threat. Yeah, yeah. So you're a triple threat. You can I sing and dance and act. I learned that. I mean, I, I'm, I was like, I knew my strength was like the acting, but the dance, like, oh my God, that was that was not good. I saw my some of my auditions. Yeah, like, you either have or you don't. Yeah, it's, it's really, it was really bad. And sing, you know, how, how good can an 11-year-old sing anyway? So right. I was like, Duh. but I learned it and I got professional training and I was there every day. It's like, that's what we did. We, when we were off school, we had to go there every day and train to like, 10 30 p.m. at night and wow we go back up in school next morning and then you practice and you have shows and tours so it was some great great years where i was introduced like to i must almost say like the adult world in a way mm -hmm. because we were living on tour buses we were doing live tv shows and yeah it, it really wow. got professional from a young age but i was just having fun but i was also divided because i knew where i was want to go but yeah, at the same time, my parents was like, yeah, you have to take care of your school. If you can't take care of your school, we're going to take you oh, out. Yeah. So I was kind of like, okay, even though it's hard in the morning, I know this this is so fun. Did I you mean, have the on-set tutors and stuff? On what? Did you have on-set tutors and classes on set? Or did you just go to school and do the other stuff? Yeah, it's a normal school. Oh, and when I was finished at school, like 1 or 2 p.m., you have to like go up there and like do your training. So, But that means also they had to take us out of school sometimes because now you're gone for a certain amount of time doing these, these live shows and stuff. Um, but I had so much fun. And that's like when the school closed back in 2004, I think. Um, I went to an opening audition on a, on a big movie called Aching Hearts by the Danish director, Nils Malmrose. And he was having an opening audition where there was like 3,000 kids. This was like X Factor, American Idol style, where you just walk in with mm. like, a, and you say one line to the camera and it's yes or no, yes or no. You're kidding. That was how it's like. And this guy, Nils Malmrose, is like the Danish Spielberg. He's like a big, big director back that's home. That's a great idea. Why haven't they done this here? One line in an acting, one yeah. line to the camera, that's genius. Yeah, and he could tell right away if you had it or not. And this was a period piece where we, we were supposed to film over three years so if i got this this role that means i was locked for three years so mm -hmm. they could see us like physically grow right. over the years in this movie and that was a long audition process too but that was like in real life so when i got in there call what was back, your one line uh yeah it was Give in it, to the camera. it was like well i was like do you know why mona lisa's mouth is full of like um, glue and the director would say no um it's because her, her mouth is dirty. I think it was that. Oh. It's just a little line, you know, so where he could tell, oh, you're going to tell a story. Yes. So with, with that little thing, um, he could tell if it was something because um, 
if I booked that role, uh, I had to portray the director in himself. Like this was a story about his own life. Oh, okay. So he's looking for himself. For himself That's in a young right. age when he was from 15 to eight, 18, 19 years old. So yeah, I, I booked that role, and that's where it, it's it's three it's, years uh, on that three show. Three years locked out, and I had no idea how that was everybody, like the everybody change. Everybody else got next, and you got come over here. Let me talk to you. <laughs> yeah, that that changed my life for sure because I had no idea how big that would be, and it's also a photograph of my 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 youth in a way. I can yes. see me transform from a twi- fifteen year old to a nineteen year old man. All of a sudden, wow. the voice get deeper and right. Especially a lot the, of changes. Yeah, and the girls too. Like all of a sudden they have no breasts, and all of a sudden they become like right. women, women. All of a sudden on overnight. Yeah. yeah. I can't remember my lines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we become a family oh all gosh. of a sudden. And while I was doing that movie, I start booking short films and like all like creating a network back in Denmark again. This yes. is why you're in high school, right? Yeah. 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 And the movie was released in 2009, and we went like film festivals all over the world in Shanghai and Germany, and so cool. And like, yeah, I was just like so grateful because I, at that then it, time flew by, by so fast. You know, all of a sudden I was in a film festival like, in yes, Shanghai yeah. with Halle Berry, all of a sudden Andy, uh, Andy McDowell, and like all these people. <laughs> it was like, wow. Um, yeah, no, that's pretty cool. That's that was like. Um, like like a big big moment where I was like okay now it's it's gonna get serious and then I got an agent and then I was nineteen well, and moved to Copenhagen. Looking at you right now, I mean, you can play an adult. You can also play a high school kid. Yeah, <laughs> you still yeah. you look that. Yeah, where you could play, you know. Yeah, it's interesting because Especially if we, on, uh, 90210 and all this. Well, nine hundred two one zero. They were all twenty nine. Gabrielle Cateras was twenty nine when she was on that show. You know, I was when I was on that show. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's interesting because out here, uh, I people will book me younger. Yeah. But that was one of the reasons why I moved from Denmark was because I was in that limbo gap where it's like, I'm not a teenager, I'm not a dad. I'm right in the middle where it's hard to book roles all of a sudden mm-hmm. and yeah. Is there a lot going on in Denmark? Right now, yes, there are, especially with the whole streaming thing going on right now. It's 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 really so great. A lot of content being filmed there. Oh yeah, and for Netflix and stuff, there's this new show called Chestnut Man on the Netflix, which is a Danish show. It's really, really? good. Yeah. Is is it SAG there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure. Is it still SAG or is it now SAG after? SAG after. Okay. They combine the two because after was like you know. Yeah, no use, yeah. Right. Yeah. What would your ideal role be? Like now or back then? Now. Now. See, you keep saying you have a goal, which I absolutely love because that's you got to have a goal. Yeah. And what is that goal? What is your I end mean, game? Mm, I would say my my, my you say role wise. Mm-hmm. I mean, always I've been booked as like the guy next door, the hero. Um, I always wanted to explore more of like the dark sides and like the 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 shady like the what's going on like like work with some of my pain I think could be really really interesting mm-hmm. like to act it out in a way and not always be like the typical uh, mm-hmm. hero it's uh, but with you say I don't I'm not in a hurry for that I mean for me out here it's like taking the small steps all the time instead of going for the big fish sometimes you need a smaller fish and for me it's like just to be cast as an American was really hard for me in the mm-hmm. beginning. I was always cast as like the Russian guy or uh, agent number eight with the weird accent or whatever it is, you, you know. The American accent? <laughs> I'm really trying my best right now. <laughs> Emma, it's gonna be hard. You know, we think it's so easy because it's American accent, but well, it's- Well, there are a lot of accents in America, a lot of different accents, but. Yeah, and that's why I sometimes, as again, I say, sometimes I just say baloney to people where I'm from. Just like, what, are you from the South? I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> right. But, I mean, that's just like one of the things could be be cast as an American would be great because what messes it up for me is like the grammatical stuff. Yes. Sometimes that's where people like, you can't, where are you from? You know. <laughs> uh, you know who you kind of remind me of and that you could probably, because you just said that you wanted to go with those darker roles, but you have this great look that when Edward Norton did a movie, you know Edward Norton oh, is? Yeah, He's yeah. phenomenal. Oh, yeah. I rewatched American Louis History Rock. X last the time. Louis He's in jail, and he's yeah, yeah. He, Robert Beck. He, he's he's the killer at the end. Yeah, yeah. At the even that you know he is, and you're you're I still think it's like it's, it's, it's a one word. Have you I'll seen this up, movie? Is where he has these conros where he's no. The, that's no, not the he's one. He's in jail. Uh, there was a, a bishop that uh, allegedly was doing something to him he shouldn't. So the bishop dies, and they're trying to find out who did. And he mm. plays this really innocent kid 
Like, oh. I don't know what to do. It wasn't me. And Robert Mayer defends him, and they get him off. And at the end, they realize he did it, and he just starts laughing. He played played everybody through but the even when you know he did it you're like you still are wondering yeah. that's how good he played he was, both oh, sides yeah. do you watch it it's really good it's an actress piece but i love what you just said um and that is uh that you want to work with some of your pain mm-hmm. and that's such a great way to put it for an actor primal fear yes primal fear and that's the movie fear, that's the movie i'll write it down so i can remind you of it um, primal fear but that's as you grow as a person like you know, you 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 gain more pain. Mm-hmm. You go through more life experiences. Yes. Right, and then you can draw on those and use those. Yeah. How how have you prepared for some of your roles and and do you have an acting coach? Did you go to school? You know, other than that, Mickey Mouse Club. Yeah. So uh, I mean, first time I ever received training was in back in 2012 where I did a a uh, big, big movie called This Life, a um, second World War movie uh, that went really, really well and really like established me as an actor back home. And after that, I kind of needed some answers. I think I was around 22 at that time. And I had like the, the training as a kid, but like all of a sudden I was like, N- I, I need to know what I'm doing because I didn't have any idea what I was doing. Mm-hmm. I was just doing it because it surfaced so nat- naturally for me. So I was seeking some answers and I couldn't attend the, the Danish acting school. I was like, that's like, you have to go to an audition again. And so I was like, okay, let me go overseas. So I tried the William Esper studio in New York and I studied there. And all of a sudden it was just like, I found a key for something I was looking for. I was like, ah, oh, this is what it is about. Okay, now I can start working on it, you know? And at the same time, I got older, and you say you get more life experience. You, you you see more things, and you start having an opinion. And yeah, so I was starting like to get it break down, like a little bit more trying to get some technique and like trying to figure out what I was doing. And, and that was a big thing for me. And after that, I was just keep studying whenever I had the chance for it. So also studied in Bali out there in an acting school out there for, f- really? for three months. And yeah, here in LA at Aaron Spicer acting studio. And yeah, all of a sudden it's just good to have that training. It's almost like a, like a football player. You have to go to the gym or you have to like keep, keep that instrument alive. Otherwise it's going to be boring. And as again, you need some answers, some pictures. Um, there was this great acting teacher who was like, yeah, imagine a soccer game or a football game. If we have two, two, two teams it's like a, a field full of players and this is real emotions we want to we want to see something right and the audience are like yeah oh oh fuck you mm-hmm. and like are really start crying and you see football players crying when they lose a football game yeah. but that's real emotions yeah, you know it's real emotions and it's, it's the same what we do we're players and we have to play something and people don't want to see something that's boring so that's like when we get a script that's our rules that's what the game plan are and mm-hmm. it's our job to make it interesting so to react yeah um i mean it's just i I love old movies. I yeah. love watching them because they're so different than now. They're so different. I don't know what. What is your favorite movie? Mm. Uh, let's do American movie, and then we'll do. Yeah, I, I think it must be Terminator Two: Judgment Day. That was a good one. Oh, okay, yeah. That's uh, a movie I can I can always watch. That movie isn't Arnold from. Austria. Austria. He's from Austria. Austria. Oh, yeah. I'm locked down right now. Um, <laughs> sorry, Austria. Uh, and what is your favorite movie in Denmark? Mm. Do you know it? Um, I like to know because I'm going to watch it. I love foreign films. Yeah. Yes, I watched I, I all like, your clips. I mean, I like this one that recently won an won an Oscar from Denmark this year. It was like called Another Round. That's a really good movie. Is it's it on Netflix? Hulu, I think. Hulu. It's on Hulu. Yeah, and uh, that's a really good movie. And, Another uh, round. I'm gonna watch it. And it won an Oscar recently, so we were celebrating, oh. and I was like, <laughs> yeah. So it's always fun when like little You're, countries yes, we of win. Course. It's like it's a huge accomplishment for for the country. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm really proud. Like, and that's also I'm a very very proud Dane. That like when people saying where you're from, and like I'm not as generous they saying I'm from I'm from Denmark, yes. and I think people are associating it with something something good yes yeah. and are your parents still in denmark they are yeah and what yeah. do they think about you being here because i know if my child was in a denmark crazy, I, a crazy kid moving yeah. to the u.s <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> well, be what, what, when my when i told my dad i was coming to los angeles which is just five hours Four south hours in a broken car. yes but when i told him he literally put in front of me news clip paper clippings i kid you not we were just talking about this the other day and the newspaper clippings basically said 
LA Strangler. Los Angeles smog will oh, yeah. take five years off your life. <laughs> oh God. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. And I was like, he was trying everything to get me not to come to LA. Yeah. yeah. But I, I was born in Philadelphia. When I moved to LA, my father said, the country is tilted. If you look at it, it's tilted aside and all the loose nuts rolled to California. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh, your dad was right. That is hilarious. That is. But so you went to your pa- family and you said, hey, mom, dad, I'm, I love you, but I'm getting on a plane and I'm just going to pack it up and go for how long? I mean, it was it was not that simple, actually. So in 2013, I did the Danish version of Dancing with the Stars. I was in that show for like I made it halfway through the show where I had you like the star or the dancer. I was the star. The, I was the yeah star. yeah. He's so a I, huge. Okay, first of all, he's a huge. Lesson, so. He's a huge celebrity <laughs> but here, that, but in in Denmark, he's like. <laughs> but like it was the Prince of uh, Denmark. Yes, I know. It's amazing. Yeah, that time when I did that show, I hadn't danced since I was like twelve. Really? So I hadn't done anything, ah, and was I was that? so stiff in my. I haven't really practiced dance since. Like she was called Melena, and that was like where the story actually begins with this whole little thing. Because my dance partner was called Melena, and she was living in Los Angeles with her husband. But we were shooting the show in Denmark, and we were so we. She was flew into like train with me. And we got so good friends, and she was like, "Hey, whenever this show is over, you should come and visit m- visit me There's in L.A." A very famous swing dancer named Melena, is it her? Uh, Melena Ostergaard. She was actually in "So You Think You Can Dance" in 2014. Okay. I know and who she is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Melena Ostergaard. But we're, I'm writing all this down because I want to put a clip of you. Oh yeah, yeah. In this episode. Cool. Yeah. Right. That'd be cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, she was like, "Come out to L.A. You will love it." And I was like. Oh, I'm probably more New Yorker. I'm like, I was already thinking going to New York or something, but she's like, come out. And I was like, okay, let me do three months out here. And that was just like, uh, it, it's a whole nother story in itself because I've started out living in Anaheim. I thought that was LA and I was like very confused. You're you have to drive right, all yeah. the time. I was like, this is really, uh. but then I moved to uh, Hollywood Hills into a big mansion up there. I found on the old sketchy craigslist if you remember that where you can find yes. rooms and, right, yeah right. so when i moved up there i was like now i know what this is about and it's almost like explaining like how does water taste i, I don't know it just tastes good and that was mm-hmm. how i felt about los angeles when i finally was in the right position surrounded by the right people and we were just kicking it we were just like doing self tapes auditions yeah. and all of a sudden it was just like people were like hey we actually want to work with you but you got to be here mm-hmm. so that back and forth thing i was trying to do for like a couple of years after i was like hmm i should actually start considering what i wanted to do with my life because again i was in that gap where oh, you're mm-hmm. not a dad you're not a teenager and people out here actually wanted to work with me so mm-hmm. i sat down like Almost Google is like, how can I get into the U.S.? And I figure out, okay, there's two ways: you get a visa, or you can go for a green card. And I knew with myself that I wanted to be here, so I spent three years on creating a green card application for myself and get a lawyer. And as opposed to a work visa? Uh, no, directly to a green card. Yeah. So what I'm, my status is, I'm an alien with extraordinary ability. All right. That's what it's called. Aren't we all? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really. Yeah. Uh, abilities for yeah. No, that's crazy. So you you've been here for three years. So think about this. He goes through all of that. He gets here. You get here. Yeah. And then the pandemic hits. Yeah. And you're like. Whoa, Oops, wait timing? a minute. Yeah, I yeah. mean, that's a pretty hard blow to go through all of that and then, Yeah, you know. and I feel like we, everything was just getting started. Yeah. And I mean, not beside, beside that, I was just always like me and I was, I was actually married at that time to a Danish mm. woman and we went through a terrible divorce and all of a sudden oh, I had I'm to go sorry. out here by myself. And I was like, you know, the whole game changes when you have to live by yourself. So again, as I said, I learned so much. I've grown, grown so much as a human being. and I, I've, I've learned so many sides of myself I didn't know was possible. Possible. And the first year out here was just like pure surviving, pretty much. I had no idea, you know, where did I get my social security card? What is a credit score? A DMV? What? Um, That's true. People from Europe don't understand the credit score. You don't scores. have any of that over there? No. You guys don't have social security security all, numbers there? Yeah, we have, but it's like on a, on a separate card where it's like, and it's only four numbers. So. It's not a big <laughs> loan business in Europe where you go out and get a loan for a house or you, to the credit doesn't matter because everything's cash or anything's, you know. Yeah, yeah. No wonder they're trying to merge it all. Right? That's no wonder they're trying to merge it all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
So, so yeah, the mindset changed a lot from being on like, I'm on vacation mode to actually now I'm here mode yeah. and ready to kick some ass. So yeah, the first year was like, that was pretty much surviving every day. And yeah, and I had so many things. I booked like small indie movies, like small short films. I had been on so many cool sets during the last three years out here where I like, because it's like starting all over again. Nobody yeah. knows you out here. Indie films are a great learning opportunity. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, they're amazing. And I'm gonna say shout out to your agent because I don't have an agent kind of God's been my agent, but I've had many agents and shout out to your agent for really pounding it for you because yeah. she's yeah. really working for you and she doing is. Shelley, Shelley, you said? Like, uh, Sharon Kelly. Sharon and Kelly. My ma manager. You yeah. Yeah, and my manager, Anders Lucas, who's also like super supportive. I mean, I have a really good crew Team, around yeah. me where it's like, yeah, we, we want to make this happen because nobody can do this on their own out here. Yeah, it's it's no. so tough. I mean, it is tough, but. It's very tough. When I first started, I read an article from Sylvester Stallone. And he said, whatever you do, he's kind of joking. It was in a pa newspaper. He's like, whatever you do, you got to lie on your resume. <laughs> and he only said that because. Everybody does it. Everybody, when you go in. I remember getting really great auditions when I was first here, and I'd go in and they'd just look at me and they then they look at my resume and they'd be like, "Oh, you're she's green." They'd say mm -hmm. she's green, green meaning new, and yeah. you can't, you know, I haven't had enough experience or whatever. And and I was like, seeing some of my friends that hadn't booked anything and they were putting like all this crazy stuff on their resume. I'm like, hey, you didn't do that, and they book stuff. Yeah, but I got this part now. Like now they can put something on it. Then That's you take funny. it out. Yeah, you start taking it off the and putting best, it around. Uh, lying on the resume stories about four or five years ago, there was a hurricane in Florida, and a guy who had worked for the governor had on his resume, I do ASL, American Sign Language, but he didn't. Oh. We knew a little bit of it. And he said, fluent. So they said, we're doing a newscast right now. We need you to sign. He's okay. And he didn't know half the words. So he didn't know the word for hurricane, and he, and he, but he knew the word for monster. So the governor is this horrible hurricane, this big monster, you know, and... <laughs> <laughs> so everybody called. I think the guy must have gotten fired after He's that. Like, it was, I it was, love yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's one of the funniest things. So maybe not so much that. Oh, that's funny. No, well, I mean, it's and it's incredible that you've. How did you get your agent? That was through my manager, actually. Yeah, you get your he, manager. Uh, um, my oh, that. <laughs> that's another funny story, actually. So. Hey, Laurel and Hardy. Yeah. <laughs> so before I moved out here, I was here all the time. I was here. I knew. I, I love being here. So. Oh, you say Laurel and Hardy. How old are you? Okay. Do you know who Laurel and Hardy are? No. <laughs> Think a comedy troupe in the fifties or maybe even the forties. Okay. okay. Yeah. I saw it. No, it they had a, a rerun. They it. had a rerun on Netflix the other night. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, "Oh, who is that?" And she said, "I saw this when it was new." And that's <laughs> three whatever they are. You're a little <laughs> curly. Yeah. It's funny. It's like Stan and Ollie. Why did she say that one? No, yeah. I'm talking to Thomas <laughs> right now. That's okay. I was actually looking one of these. Can, what is this? I'm a little thirsty. Kind of. You oh. may have anyone you want, but they're not Can cold. I? That's okay. Cold Pineapple sound like, sounds like delicious. Yes, go I ahead. Feel like it. I okay. won't tell you that it's my wife's company, so you just... Uh, Can I taste one? Yeah, taste yeah. It. We're going to give you four when you go home. <laughs> it's not cold, though. It's okay? That's okay. okay. Yeah. I like it on the rocks. Okay. No. no. That's... No. No. On the rocks. Is well, nice. I always say that sometimes. On the rocks. And they're like, a health uh, drink, and they actually are really, really amazing, and they're, they have great ingredients. Less and three grams of sugar. Mm. Yeah. Brizo. That's delicious, guys. Right? Go get a burrito. Brizo. 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 Yeah. Um, it is good, huh? The story about that is when they started marketing it, the marketing people came and they said, we need everything we can for the middle of America because they love it with vodka. They're like, no, it's a health drink. And uh. I said, no, have it with vodka. Have a drink that they need your product to do it. You'll make zillions. So. That's hilarious. You can Funny. mix this with anything, really. You know, it's, yeah. it's that good. Um, oh yeah, so yeah, the manager story, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. that's the funny, because as I said, I was here all the time, yada yada, and I traveled, and all of a sudden I rented an Airbnb in West Hollywood, and there was a little guest house, and this gentleman and his husband opened the doors for me, and were like, well, come in. I'm like, oh, where are you from? I'm from Denmark. And all of a sudden he go like, I'm from Denmark too. No way. I'm like, what? And I was like, what do you do out here? And he's like, yeah, I'm a talent manager. I represent screenwriters and directors. I'm like, I'm get talent. out of here. <laughs> you know, what a small world. And that was by coincidence. And all of a sudden he was like, yeah, whenever you get out here, let me know. Because that's a coincidence. And exactly. And now the guy's your manager? He's my manager now. And it's been that since I moved here. And he's the guy who technically, like, he's not holding my hand, but he's showing, like, yeah. where, because. 
Yeah, Anders Lucke. He has the Anders Lucke. Lucke, yeah, uh, from Locus Entertainment. Yeah, and Locus Entertainment. I've heard of that. Yeah, he yeah. is. It's like really, really a good guy because he knows everyone and he has that different angle. And sometimes I can be a little bit too humble, where it's good to have someone that be like. <coughs> Yes. Taco Bob, that uh, Babylon movie, <laughs> you know, whatever it is. So it's like, true. You need a good team behind you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's just the roots of, of being Danish. It's like we're a little bit humble. Listen to the show, you get a good shout out. <laughs> Anders yeah. Luca. Luca, yeah. And Sharon Kelly. And Sharon Kelly. Is, what company does she work for? Uh, American Artist Group Talent Agency. American Artist Group Talent Agency. I love that. That's yeah. great. That's perfect. Yeah. And as again, you, you need those people to have those tools you don't have yourself. And. So again, yeah, I've done a lot of work back home, but out here they they don't know that work. So, but the only thing is, I can show myself in front of the camera. They could tell, oh, this is a, a player who knows what he's doing. But what did again, your agent uh, say in Denmark about you leaving? Were they kind of bummed? I mean, we talked about it for a long time. I'm still represented by them. All that management, they they really take good care of my 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 jobs back home. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say, I mean, I was back home last year shooting a comedy show. So Ada. you still go back and shoot them? Yeah, whenever there's a project that's like I'm fit for, but if I wouldn't go home to shoot two days on a short film right. Right. in Denmark because uh, yeah, yeah, I was American like, movie star, yeah. yeah, and we have to like keep growing. But I had a long conversation with them, and also like it's like. I am there with like called the player that is like uh, abroad. Yes, uh, it's right. it's also an interesting card you're, for you're them a big to have. Picture on their wall. Look who we'd have. You know? <laughs> yeah. they, they represent like maybe twenty men, twenty women, and so it's a small agency. But for them, it's it's a good card to have to have someone that's actually um, eligible to work out here right, so because know, it's hard with self tapes. I know yeah. the way this works. Is everybody's picture is on the wall. When this movie comes out, your picture's going to the top of the list. Mm. Rearrange the picture and put Thomas up front. They're How do you know Thomas list. isn't there right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it is. We do really know his mm-hmm. level of credibility. I want your, uh, agent in Denmark to send us a picture of the wall. Is this right now? Yeah. Your picture. Please, where is my phone? <laughs> all that talent. All that talent is called? It's ca- all that management. All that management in yeah. Denmark. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to see if they have any pictures in their studio. Mm. Where they could call me and I'll go, I'll, we'll swap. I'll go over to Denmark and shoot some movies. I'll do a two day in movie. You do a prison day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on in Denmark right now with, with you? We don't really usually talk about OBK? politics or the pandemic, but just curious. I'm actually kind of curious what's going on in Denmark regarding all of this um, theatrics. <laughs> Denmark was actually opened, and now I think they just went back to some of those restrictions again with masks and all that mandate thing, where it's like you have to go. Yeah, I think it's like that right now. Um, But, I mean, the population is so small. I think most of the the country is actually doing all right. I think it's just like so confusing for everyone right now to follow because things are going so fast. I mean, all I know, I, I miss my family a lot sometimes, yeah. and it would be. That's why I've, I've, I kind of wonder, like, it could be great here next year to like, like make a mix of like see some friends and family, and also do some work at the same time. And have your parents been out here? Not for so so long. They have come yeah, 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 yeah. They have been here before. I think they're planning on coming back in April again, just for your brothers and sisters. I have a brother, younger brother. Yeah. Oh, he must miss you. Yeah, yeah. He's the three years younger, married man. Um, is he in acting? No, no, there's no like creative bones in my family like so far. Mm-hmm. No, the anomaly, huh? yeah, and that's why it's like I I had so much support from them since I was a little, little kid, you know. So if you had to choose another career, what would it be? Ah, oh, that's well, interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> I know, um, right? I always had a little something for like for talk for, for like photography, mm-hmm. so, like uh, film stuff. Um, I haven't. Um, it's, have you it's, modeled? No, I have not. I think that's a, a whole nother industry to do modeling. Actually, I, th- I have no idea how to get in in, you in that field. Still, somebody takes your picture. Yeah, I, I know, know. modeling is a very hard job. I'm making fun of it. <laughs> yeah. Basically, you stand there and somebody takes your picture. From his side, he looks like almost like a young Billy Baldwin. Yeah, so like okay. when he smiles, just yeah. his, when he has From like. Slitter, a, or was that movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just as, like the side profile. I hate like, you look like I look like me. <laughs> people do it to me all the time. You look like Still, Corey I wish they would say that. They're like, you look, you look like, like oh Baldwin? gosh, you look like. Does anybody ever tell you you look like Corey Eleanor? <laughs> Corey Eleanor? No, no, no. Uh, no, that girl from God's Not Dead or Beverly Hills Boy. That that one. I don't even think you. Yeah, yeah. I guess he does know I'm an actress. I just kind yeah. of told him about my podcast. Yeah. Well, I'm talking for three minutes. He knows you're an actress. Oh yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Bob's just being sarcastic. I'm so sorry. So you said Corey you explains actually explains all my jokes. You know, she doesn't make people get me. But. Well, no, because people want to know that I actually it weren't, you're not really harassing me or picking no, on really me because I get me, I really get really comments all the time and they're like, "Is Bob treating you okay? Is nope. he nice to you?" He's a Is he okay? man. <laughs> but speaking about it, say, as you as also know, as an actress, there's a lot of like free time. That's yeah. actually when the whole pandemic hit in the beginning. Uh, people are like, oh, no, are we going to stay home? I'm like, that's what I do a lot of the time. <laughs> <laughs> actually, not really changing, you know. But yeah. now we say, yeah, of course, I always had that cre creative side. So I have a screenwriting partner out here. We do a little short films here and there whenever I can. I got into editing and know how to edit now and yeah. compose music and stuff like that. So cool. yeah, we had a made a short film like last year that went on some festivals, a movie called Constructed Dreams in America. Um, Ooh, Constructive so, Dreams in America. Yeah. Um, Tell us so, about it, can you? Yeah, that's about the two upcoming filmmakers that like set sails to what it means to be an American. So they went into like, it's like a documentary pretty much. But in the, during this filming, they get lost in their own characters and ends up stealing a million dollars. Yeah. So it's oh. like a fiction mockumentary about- yeah, Where I'm from, we call it finding. A finding. <laughs> yeah. And that's that all comes from like being like, I can't sit still. I hate like have nothing yeah. to do. And the same, that's like, I, I respect like what you do with the podcast. It's just like, I love when people just like use their time to yeah. to, to have fun. And that's what I, I used to do with my spare time. It's like, and when you're creative, you have to have an outlet. Yeah. I've realized like you, I, like you have to either write or sing or direct or Writer, just create yeah. and I can't draw a happy face let alone paint one so that was never my thing but yeah. photography or something creative music or so maybe directing and writing is in your future you know Sylvester Stallone directed wrote and directed his Rocky right. and he got turned down so many times like every studio or something every studio yeah. was mm -hmm. like we love this movie yeah but You're we don't want you right. to play You're in it not right for that guy. <laughs> And he was like, oh, thanks so much for playing. And then he's got like, what, now five of them? It's incredible. Rocky five. I mean, they're, they're but it, it is, it's a hard process because I wanted to be honest and say, yeah, I'm, I'm, me and my partner are also working on a project right now that is about, um, I can say it's, a, it's about whistling. I'm surprised about how many people in their adult age, they don't know how to whistle. <laughs> whistle. Yes, is it all I can do, but I can't put the fingers in the mouth and do that yeah, loud one. But this is, like, this is like a movie, a mix between of Eight Mile and Drive. Ooh. So that's it's gonna be an underground whistling battle industry where people are not insulting each other, but they are whistling at each other. Like I love whistling that. contests or whistling? Yeah, it's like a, almost like a, you know rap battles. Yes, where they like, like freestyle. a whistle battle. Yeah, but this oh, is about cool. whistling battles where people are actually facing each other and like I mean. You know, that's something that could take off, and also the whole country's doing oh, totally. it and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because I go sh what to get. My dog. Mm. I'll do. I'll just. Uh, oh yeah, just, loud ones. But you I'm wouldn't sure walk by yourself and whistling a Backstreet Boys songs, would you? If I knew a Backstreet Boys song, <laughs> I would do that. Yes. Uh, in my room five or oh something. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Like. Yeah, that's how I whistle. Oh my gosh! A lot of people can't do that. You're right, and they exactly. literally can't. Their tongue yeah. doesn't do the certain. And actually, to hit the tone genius. where it's like, oh, this is. Beautiful. That's the other thing you gotta know what you got to really, and that's where it's like started. It's a great so idea. we're into like yeah, six to eight episodes. It's like episode fifteen minutes. We already shot the little pilot, but it's hard to find that platform for it. I Can say. you whistle the Backstreet Boys? Yeah, place? I'm actually playing the lead character myself. Come in on, okay, um, give us a little bit of a. This would be Maroon Five. <clears throat> Did you feel wow. me? Wow! <laughs> it's actually really good. Yeah, yeah, now I have a little dry lift because I'm a little nervous. No, but, but uh, it's actually, that's that was, beautiful. That was really, really good. Now yodel. Yodel? Like, no, 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 no. Or it's like, no, yodel, yodel, yodel. Yodel. Uh, that I can't. Yodel, yodel, yodel. That I can't. Can you do the tube and throat singing? Sorry. Like, like I don't really do that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that thing where they sing. No, two and throw is they go. Oh, it's real deep in the throat. Oh no, I can't. Uh, okay, so uh, the yo yodeling is Holland or Denmark? Where's the yodeling from? I, I think that's from Austria. It's Austria, Austria yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've got a lot of talented people <laughs> in Austria. I was just at, at a bar and a guy had that big long horn. Yeah, yeah, uh, and he was playing it. I did you redo very well? I did you redo? Did you redo? That was called did you redo? That's Australian. It's not a fugal horn. I think it's a digital dough like. But it was like from here to the wall, so it was a good seven, eight feet. He had yeah. to put it together pieces and he. Yeah, really it good. sounds like a frog that's throwing up. Yeah. 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 
That's what Quite Bob so. sounds like <laughs> every day. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. I really am. It's not, you know. Your star's on the rise. I just know how hard it is. And I mean, I've told my whole story and the agent and all of that. And it's just so difficult. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I applaud you for knowing where you want to go, <laughs> knowing your goal, having mm-hmm. your goal, and pursuing your dream. Like, that's, you know, yeah. if that's. I had this feeling the other day when I went on a little morning walk where I had this thought that came to me where. If it's gonna end tomorrow, I'm just so grateful for everything I had mm. and I have tried, I've tried more and even more like I could dream of. I mean, mm. I'm just really happy for what I've seen and what I've done and I'm not embarrassed by anything. Um, so that's why it's also it's an interesting step where it's like, like the world is like changing, I'm changing and all of a sudden I'm like, why is I, why is kids interesting all of a sudden, you know? Why is this mm-hmm. like, you know, so I'm also in a, in a, in See, a position. You know, it's people you know? like you that are so humble that get everything. <laughs> and, and I'm, right I'm just thankful so. for what I have. Like, oh, I have 10 times more. <laughs> and all the people I like more, no, you can't have any of that. So stay the way you are because it's going to be Being thankful, be yeah. 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 But you know, the good thing is, is just sitting here saying that, it's like, how do I, how do I put this? Like, what's a good analogy? You... You can always go, not that you would want to, but you can, I mean, you can go back to Denmark and work for the rest of your life. And mm. knowing that, that must be, you know, you, you've made such an imprint there and you've you've worked hard. I mean, even just three years on any show yeah. is hard work. Yeah. The Wait, hours and the, Thomas is coming, Thomas hard. is back, Thomas is back, yeah. All the people come up to the airport with the <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's like a heartthrob, I'm That's sure, it. you know, there. And, and it's, yeah. you've, now you've come to here and it's like, it's, the whole business shut down and is transitioning. Mm-hmm. You said and you had so, a girlfriend? yeah. Is she also an actress? No, she's not. And actually, it's really nice that it's someone is not. Go, I know you're famous. They're famous. Uh, yeah, I, th- I mean, it's just nice to have someone that's not like to, yes. to see the do? things. Uh, she is uh, works in retail. Oh, yeah, okay. and uh, it's just it's just nice to have someone that can see it from the outside. Sometimes, um, the good thing is, I mean, it's not even to be. I'm like, I feel like I've tried it already, but yeah. just in a different country. From yeah. like, especially I remember that Dancing with the Star things. That was just that it exploded, so you and that was like. Knew you and you'd come up and yeah, and I was just like, this was like when Instagram just was about to like, but all of a sudden, I, I remember back then it was something you had like 70,000 followers or something. And all of a sudden, if you don't take care of that, yeah, it's yeah, just going to yeah, bob yeah, down. Yeah. And it's like, all of a sudden, I'm like, I don't because know. Pressure, uh, right, right. Yeah, I just want to do my job. And I say, if I wake up one day and I don't find it funny anymore or fun to do, I'll just do something else. Well, I'll give you the tip. Most of these people that have these accounts, they have other people working their Instagram accounts. Yeah, okay. Very <laughs> few famous people work their own Instagram accounts because they don't have time. Yeah, and just find out what your values are and it's like, what do you want to do? And it's like, yeah, I know I'm authentic, honest, and real and I, I don't, don't be an, excuse me, an asshole to someone. Just be nice to people no matter who they are, you know, so. That's what stuck out when I met him. He was just so kind. Just kind to everybody, and it was like, oh, a, a kind person in LA. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be on our show. Oh, shocking! <laughs> what do you, yeah, you don't do anything, just come on our show. Right. Like, that's how you know it's nice. It's oh a God. little bit of kindness, and, and I hear people say all the time, it's free. Mm. Yeah, it's free to be kind. Yeah, it just is, you know. So. Yeah. Thank you. I'm so grateful that I got to meet you, and I'm very excited about your career and watching your career and following up. And right, we can we we can say we had you here. We are grateful. And is there anything you want to share with your listeners? And do you, um, what is your Instagram or your Twitter or um, any of your social media? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I'm on Instagram. It would just be at Thomas underscore Ernst. Yeah, I follow that. Very simple. Um, my Facebook just got hacked, so I, I'm not using <gasps> Facebook anymore, really. That was like, a, oh, You're what a... Kidding. Yeah, it's uh, which is like, for me, I was using it to keep contact with my European yeah, friends. Right. and. So when they hacked it, what did they do? All of a sudden, one day I just couldn't log in anymore. Okay. And so whoever is like, so I think someone must have frauded my ID or something. Are they posting stuff on there or you just, you can't get I in? I just couldn't get in anymore. So the email and password, everything was changed. And all of a sudden they were like, I think someone, yeah, must have taken my ID or something. I could prove that they were me in some kind of way. So I went through the whole thing with DMV, get a new license again no and way. all that stuff. But uh, Did you contact Facebook and did they rectify it? It's hard. I'm, I'm, I just gave up pretty much. Yeah. So I'm thinking just maybe just start all over again. Little note to self, like Facebook, you'll get things in your D, in your in your messages 
like a never open any don't ever open yeah. any yeah. of those things because a yeah. lot of people troll it and then you you know i never open any of those things people are always like did you open the link i'm like no <laughs> just call me and tell me about it yeah. i'll do that but right now after a month with no facebook it's actually just not it's all right it? yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's all right i'm not really missing this and it, the only thing would be like oh there's an old classmate or something i haven't heard yeah. from and also uh, people's birthdays it's hard to catch on on there when you don't have facebook i'm i'm honest it's yeah. i'm yeah you can't oh, put your actual birthday on there though oh you can't no, okay that's how they yeah, that's just a metadata thing ah, yep. okay okay they're changing their name to meta okay no, metaverse I, I don't know because i think it's facebook by meta i don't think they're gonna change facebook to meta because it's gonna be facebook instagram and everything else by meta will hmm. be at the end because if you look at it now there's a little meta at the bottom mm, okay why would they do that because they're trying to create a parent company oh, okay gotcha and well. the aliens have finally landed and they said we would have <laughs> <No>. all right <laughs> Uh, Thomas Ernst, I would like you to just dis- three words that describe you. Um, yeah, I think I mentioned it was like that would be authentic, honest, and real. Yeah. Do I get to say authentic and real are the same words? <laughs> what? Authentic and real are synonyms. <laughs> and real. Well, no. We, you know, I want. Okay, so. Have you watched any of our shows? No. I have watched the one with the twins you have on oh, okay, from yeah. uh, Cheaper by the Dozen. Yeah. I like that. That like, they discovered on a football stadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the? <laughs> like what? Yeah. Out of all those people, that's Isn't a, that that great? a good story. That's yeah. like so great. Yeah. I love it. Everybody has like those kinds of yeah. of stories, right? Um, well, we do a little thing called the word association mm-hmm. test. There you go. The word association test, and I'm going to say one word, and then you're going to give me. Fancy whatever you word whatever comes word to your mind whatever comes up whatever comes it doesn't have to even make sense really okay um acting pressure <laughs> good word for that <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> oh my gosh uh childhood <laughs> pressure <laughs> if you're an actor uh creative hmm, okay great one family small hmm <laughs> America. Mm, opportunities. Great. Future. Mm. Uh, warm comes in. Warm. I like that. That's a great one. That's really great. That's great. Hope. Mm. Hope, hope that comes up. It would be uh, disappointment. Mm. Honesty. Uh, heart. Heart. Hope. Heart. Mm. Hope, disappointment. You're working on your dark side, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think you went for the opposite of that. So that's good. That's actually good. That's not how. That's how it's been for the last two years with this whole. <laughs> Uh, those are great. Those Ask are creative and great. Last oh. Guest. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, I did. Let's call him up and get it. For, go ahead. Oh, I did forget. All right, I'll ask it. Look at Corey right away, and write and write three, two, one. I'm going to tell her who is your celebrity crush. Tick tock. Tick Alicia Keys. Okay. Yeah, yeah good one. Good, yeah. She's okay, Alicia. You're, that's the first one someone's crushed on you on this show. <laughs> okay. But that's a great one. She's great. I yeah. love her. Uh, residence in Vegas, I think. I think maybe, yeah. yeah. Uh, I know, because when you go, she's like the size of a five stories. So, yeah. She's phenomenal, and she's not just a beautiful musician, but person. She seems just like such a beautiful person. You yeah, know, so. inside, outside. And out, side. Inside and out, the yeah. whole package. Good yeah. one. I'll see. That's good. <laughs> Thanks for asking that. <laughs> well, is there anything that you want your listener, our listeners to know about Thomas Ernst? Um... Tell us a fun fact about you. A fun fact? I know very um, well. I toes. <laughs> yeah, a fun fact is that people might don't know is actually when I was finished high school, uh, I was too young to could uh, attend the Danish acting school. So you have to wait till you're like 18. So I had like, what's it like two, three years I had to do. And now my parents like, you, you have to do something. You like just wait for you to go auditions. It's just like not not okay. So what people don't know is actually instead of going to school, I did the carpentry. Ooh, 
Ooh, yeah, so I was just like construction Jesus. sites. Yeah. Jesus was a carpenter. Wake up 5 a.m. Yeah, 5 a.m. in the morning, come home 4 p.m. Oh, and, and I'll, yeah. New houses or what kind of stuff? Yeah, houses, roof constructions. Right, so and like, construction. I did You're some of that. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, floors, walls. And I mean, right. I'm, to be honest, I was not a good carpenter, but I finished it and I have my diploma. And that's like instead of going so to for school. for a portion of your life, you did honest work. <laughs> it would be bad. Also, yeah. because out here it's in inches. I don't yeah. know what inches <laughs> is in <laughs> centimeters. And it would be terrible. But you know what, though? That's great that you did that. And that's also creative. So yeah. You got to and you know what? It learned me a lot. And that's why I want to say also to everyone who's listening and don't know what they want to do with their life is just do something instead of don't doing anything yes. because you will learn something if you are activated and i was a kid with like a lot of fire in my ass and that was why school wasn't like really good i need to use my energy and you know what i learned about discipline getting up for myself take like be responsible for mm -hmm. your actions and stuff like that and if i messed up or something i had a guy who told thomas what the hell is that yeah, you know yeah. I'm, oh my god so you kind of kind of like step up for your for yourself and and that's what i learned about it like okay uh, i'm I'm an actor, that's for sure, by heart and soul. So I'm just glad I did something else. And we call them ADHD and give them Ritalin and kind of calm them yeah. Them. But yeah, but yeah. this literally gave you some tools. Yeah, literally. it did. Like, yeah. It also grounded you. Yeah. Well, some like structure you also yes. because if you came out of like TV and like doing shows and all that and being like a child teenage star, all of a sudden you got to work with big craftsmen and they, they don't care who, yeah, who you saying, are. You just take set, that, Thomas, grab my that tools, board, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> get my coffee. I'm like, okay. Yeah. And just, uh, so I learned from that and, That's and there's great. so much inspiration out there. So just mm -hmm. don't take it for granted. Go out there in the world. Don't be afraid because. So they said, get me coffee. What's my motivation to get yeah. you <laughs> <laughs> and the best uh, word thing is also I didn't yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, didn't we get homework. You, yeah, there was no homework, so yeah. that was good. Yeah. yeah, you get home. Well, you also you get home, you're tired, mm -hmm. and you go to sleep very quickly. Yeah, so that was great so when great. I did A King Hearts, my first movie. There was no homework. There was nothing. I could just do my movies, and that was like okay. so great. And yeah, so do something. Don't just sit and wait. Just yeah, do something. Yeah, you're right. It's yeah. so, and you never know who you're gonna meet. That's true. You just That's never true. know what you're gonna do, what, what's gonna happen. Yeah. I don't know why, but I see you in like. Have you seen the show Downton Abbey? I'm, I'm familiar with the show. I haven't watched it yet, though. Yeah. You know, the, it sweeped the award season like several years ago. It, mm. I was like, what is this little and show little called? In fact, it's Downton Abbey, not Downtown. Downton, <laughs> Downton Abbey. I watched it, couldn't wait. It's one of those shows that like I couldn't wait to get home and watch what's going to happen. That It is so good. I could totally have seen you on that show. Like, hands down. You have to do an English accent. Yeah. Or a Peaky Blinder. Do? I could yeah. be on a Peaky Blinder. <laughs> yeah, I got a new haircut today. Yes. Oh, peaky, funky, blind. <laughs> okay, I don't know. That is so you, good. You I could, yeah. I've heard about that show, but I haven't seen it. Uh, it's also, you need subtitles because that's old English. Uh, yeah. I recently just Copy, did an audition yeah. for The Last Kingdom, that show, Netflix show. Oh, great, that, great show. That was tough. That was tough. Oh, wow. Because there's so many English words that's like old English. Right. They don't say maybe, they say perhaps or something. Right. You know? right. <laughs> perhaps. So perhaps. perhaps. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. so funny. Well, I would just leave you with one thing. Well, have you ever seen the movie Le, uh, Cinema Paradiso? No, I have not. Okay, I the whole our entire interview. God always talks to me in threes, and it sounds crazy, but I'll hear things in threes, like if I'm supposed to do it or say it or whatever or move forward. And this entire interview, I've been hearing. You gotta tell them to watch Cinema Paradiso or just Cinema Paradiso, Cinema Paradiso. So yeah. you haven't seen it, I encourage you to watch that movie. It is phenomenal, and you will love it. Okay. Okay. You will love it. That's all I will say. I can't thank you enough, Thomas Ernst, for coming today, for just answering the call and oh. being the humble, amazing, kind person that you are. We are going to certainly be following your career. Thank you so yeah. much for being here. Thank you guys so much for having me here. It was uh, so much fun. I can't believe the time flies by so fast. fast. So uh, let's do a part two yeah. once, once yeah, guys, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. And thank you for this uh, Brizo. That yeah. was delicious. Pineapple. And we're out. The Coriolis Effect is produced by Jazz Productions. Producers Corey Oliver and Bob Victor, host Corey Oliver, editor Bob Victor, and assistant editor Kate Bonsell. Hi guys, I'm Corey Oliver, and thank you for watching The Coriolis Effect. We hope you enjoyed the previous episode. Here are some more episodes you might enjoy. Hit the subscribe button below, and have a great day.